So the OnePlus 7 Pro, I've had this phone for almost, actually two weeks now, and uh, it's been my daily driver uh, alongside my iPhone XS Max, uh, but it's been my main Android phone, and so I wanted to give you my full impressions of this device after the last two weeks, and um, like I said, it's this is probably going to sound like a paid advertisement, but it has been nothing but positive. I've can rarely find a few things here and there, but they're very small things that I, I don't genuinely like about the phone. But other than that, uh, overall as a whole, this might be one of the best phones alongside the Google Pixel 3a, which I actually just did a video on, uh, but that's for a whole different set of reasons. But in terms of flagship phones at near flagship prices, uh, but for much less, the OnePlus 7 Pro is definitely the phone to go with. And I'm gonna give you my reasons why. So let's go ahead and jump right into them. The design of the OnePlus 7 Pro is fantastic. The Nebula Blue is an amazing color. If you can get it, I highly recommend getting it. Although we did check out the almond color back at the event and that was a really nice uh, option but it's not available quite yet you do get gray in the nebula blue and it changes colors in the light and it just looks so good uh, so I highly recommend picking that one up and this is also the 12 gigabyte option for RAM and 256 gigs of storage so you have plenty of storage plenty of fast performance and internals all the latest greatest Snapdragon 855 whatever you call it all of that stuff is in this phone. You have the top of the line in pretty much every department. There's also a 4,000 milliamp hour battery inside. And so from a design standpoint and internals and hardware, you're getting the best of the best. But what really stands out and what OnePlus really dove into and focused on um, was the display. And they're right. It is the best display that you can get on, on a smartphone right now. You have a 90 hertz refresh rate, which makes navigating through the operating system buttery smooth and super fast, uh, scrolling through web pages, your timeline on Twitter or Instagram, any kind of you know navigating or just general usage of the phone. There are some instances where the phone automatically switches back to 60 hertz, so you might not notice that, but it does have that option uh, already built in. And you can actually change it if you don't want to have uh, the display kind of draining a lot of battery because the 90 hertz will kind of drain the battery a little bit more. So you can switch back to 60 hertz if you want to. Um, I recommend just keeping it on. I haven't really noticed a huge hit in battery uh, with or without it off or on, but it does do a little bit more damage. And also, you know, the display itself is super big. It goes from top to bottom, no bezels at the top at all because of the pop-up camera, which we'll get into more in just a second. And then at the bottom, very, very small amounts of chin uh, at the bottom of the uh, phone. But with that said, watching videos on it is great, but I'm not a big fan of the curved edges. So this is kind of my first uh, take on what I don't like. I absolutely hate curved edges on phones. I never liked it when Samsung kind of started doing this and making it more mainstream. I prefer flatter edges around the phone. It's easier to get screen protectors on it. You can't really get a tempered glass screen protector on this phone, or if you do, you're gonna have to spend a lot of money on something like a white stone dome screen protector. And even then, they're not always going to be the best options. I just want to be able to buy something on Amazon for $8 like I can on other phones. Like my iPhone, I can get a $8 screen protector. It's flat. It's perfect fit every time and it works. And there are other phones that have this, not just the iPhone, but that was just the thing that came to mind. But moving aside from that, um, accidental touches are gonna be a problem when you're holding the phone in your hand. You can see that your, your fingers kind of bleed over to the edges. And so again, curved edges on phones, please stop doing this. Um, but that's really my only main gripe in terms of the display, uh, or just really my main gripe of the phone. Other than that, at the top, there's no notch, there's no cutout, there's nothing. I love that, and honestly, I never use a selfie cam, so they moved it to the top, and when you open up the camera app and turn on the selfie cam, the camera will pop up, and that's how you can take your selfies. And actually, there is a screen unlock too, uh, but I don't recommend doing that because your camera is going to be popping in and out, and there's a motorized slider on this phone, and that's kind of what people might consider a negative when it comes to the OnePlus 7 Pro. How long is the motorized slider going to last? And OnePlus has actually done tests in a clean environment, so, you know, Samsung Galaxy Fold theories kind of come in. What's going to happen if debris or dust or sand or anything gets into that motorized slider? I'm not going to test it because I don't want to break it. OnePlus has said it should last about 300,000 uh, attempts of opening and closing the pop-up camera. So I don't think I'm going to get 
to that point in my life cycle or my use of this phone. Some might, if you really like to take a lot of selfies, maybe this isn't the phone for you. Um, you can find another phone that doesn't have a motorized pop-up slider and probably a better selfie cam. I don't use it and screen unlock is going to be an issue. You probably will hit that quota if you're gonna be opening your phone so many times a day. So I probably would recommend just using the in-display fingerprint sensor, which uh, this iteration seems a lot faster than the OnePlus 6T's version. It's far more accurate than I've seen in the past. It's still not quite as fast or accurate as a physical fingerprint sensor or maybe something like Face ID, even though I do have my issues with Face ID, but that's a whole other story. Uh, but the in-display fingerprint sensor is my biometric authentication of choice for the OnePlus 7 Pro. And I highly recommend making that the same choice for you. Uh, so that you can save the motorized slider from being open and closed a bajillion times a day. One other issue that I do kind of have with the phone's design is the glass back, which is kind of a love-hate because I love the way it looks. I love the way it feels. It's, it doesn't really feel like normal glass. It's very soft, um, but it also can slide out of your hands real easily. And I've been using my phones naked with no case a lot lately, um, and it just feels way better to do that. And I... Um, get kind of nervous doing it with this phone. So something to keep in mind, if you're clumsy or you have sweaty hand syndrome, if that's a real thing, uh, you're probably gonna drop this phone a lot. So I highly recommend putting a case on it. Also one quick side note, there is no headphone jack, uh, but you know, you do get USB-C and there's some really good sounding speakers. You get a speaker at the top and a speaker at the bottom and it's very loud and it sounds really, really good. I was actually very impressed with how good these speakers sound. So if you watch a lot of videos with this display, watching movies, it's gonna be a great experience. You do also get the alert slider. I do have a minor gripe about this. Um, I love the alert slider being able to go from silent, vibrate, and ringer uh, real quickly and easily, but it's right above the power button and it's textured so you can feel it and it's, more prominent to get to, and I feel like that's the power button. This is where power buttons are on most phones, and I always confuse it for the power button, so I kind of wish it was on the other side, but that's just a minor gripe. Performance over the last few weeks has been amazing, as you can tell. Um, nothing really to note, uh, app management, RAM, all that stuff. I mean, with this, with these internals, it's kind of hard to find any kind of degrading performance right now. Talk to me in six months, maybe it suffers the Pixel 3 syndrome, I don't know. But right now, top of the line specs, it's blazing fast speed. I've had no issues with it. I love Oxygen OS. It's one of the better skins out there. There are some issues with it, but it's pretty much stock Android with some extra customization options, like being able to change the icon packs if you want, right on, without having to put on Nova Launcher or a different launcher. There are some extra customization tweaks that aren't like stock Android, but the overall look and feel will remind you of stock Android, but then you can go ahead and change things like the icon pack and the theme, whether you wanna go from light to dark and then change the accent colors of each, pretty much the entire OS, you can change the accent color. So, you know, I changed mine to orange with a dark theme. I think that looks really cool. And pretty much everything that's not black would have an orange accent, which is just a cool look in my opinion. You can change it to whatever color you want. But in terms of performance and software, nothing but good things so far. And uh, I'll quickly touch on battery life again. It does have a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. Uh, battery life is different for everybody. I'm not gonna do the screen on time thing because it's different for everybody. Uh, really, the only thing I can report to you is as a normal power user, using my phone more uh, during like lunchtime when I'm like eating something real quick and I'm looking through and having time to actually use my phone and using it at night was when I use it the most, watching videos, catching up on the day. Uh, during the workday, I don't really use it as much because I'm on my computer, but it makes it through with plenty of battery life. I'm never rushing to a charger. And if I am rushing to a charger, you do have the Warp 30 watt charger inside the box. You can charge your phone from zero to 100 in an hour absolutely insane. So you're never going to run out of battery. Really, if you have this charger with you, plug it in for 15 minutes, you're going to have plenty of battery life. And I've never really had to do that because battery life has been good. So hopefully that keeps up over time. But again, maybe in a few months down the road, when we do a long-term review, I can hopefully say the same glowing things about this phone, especially in terms of battery life. Camera is where we kind of start to see a little bit of less performance. I don't know, it's not the best camera in the world. It's not the worst camera. It's definitely better than what it used to be on other phones. They're getting better. It doesn't beat Pixel in my eyes. Um, it doesn't even maybe beat 
like the Samsung, I think it's pretty close with Samsung and the iPhone, but it's a good camera. If you, maybe if you poured over the Pixel uh, 3 camera APK, I didn't do that, but I know you could do that with last OnePlus phones and it worked really, really well. So maybe you can do that and make this camera even better, but you do have a triple camera set up on the back. You do have your telephoto, your wide angle and your ultra wide angle lens. So that's awesome because now you have the ultra wide camera angle, just like you would on the Samsung Galaxy S10. So you can fit more things uh, if you're taking like a big group picture or really for landscapes and cityscapes, I think it looks great to be able to capture more in that photo. So it's a great option to have. Portrait mode's not bad. It's not the best, but it's not bad. That's kind of the glowing theme of the OnePlus camera. So let me know if you wanna see a more dedicated video on the camera, but right now my impressions are, it's okay. If you're looking to buy this phone for the performance, the display and the speed, you're not gonna be disappointed. If you're a big camera fiend and you need the best camera, this might not be the phone for you, but if you can get past it and just look at all the other things that I've touched on, on how much I like this phone, and then look at the price tag. It starts at 649. This phone's around 750 because of this particular model with the upgraded specs. Still, $750 is 300 plus dollars cheaper than most flagship phones like the S10 Plus, the iPhone XS Max. All of those phones are way more expensive than this phone, and you can save yourself a ton of money and get just as good as performance, if not better, better features, better displays, just all around, in my opinion, the best phone, the phone to beat right now. Uh, and price has a lot to do with that, but of course you're not settling in a lot of other areas. So let me know if you guys agree in the comment section down below, if you've picked one up, let me know your thoughts, or if you're considering purchasing one, let me know what's maybe holding you back in the comment section down below. And as always guys, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss more videos like this one in the future. And I hope to see you guys in the next video.